everyone, welcome back my friends. Now, before we get started, just to let you know, Deadweight premieres come at the end of this week. I will be taking my camera down there. Hopefully I can catch a few interviews, as well as catch the excitement of premiere night. They're almost sold out Friday night, but Saturday night they still have tickets. I'll put the link down below. If you're in the Wisconsin Oshkosh area, get the tickets. They're only five bucks, and you're going to see a true homegrown Wisconsin film. Everything out of it is from Wisconsin. Gotta love that part, okay? And... If you want to catch some insight ahead of time on Deadweight, if you can't make it to Oshkosh, then check out the Dixon Cider podcast. It should be posted tomorrow. I'll put the link down below. Go to their uh, site, watch, listen to the podcast, or go to iTunes, look for the Dixon Cider, where they get to interview Adam and John, the creative minds behind Deadweight. They even gave me the privilege of being on the show as well. So I got to talk to them as well, kind of movie geek out. And uh, it just a, was a lot of fun, and you should check out that podcast. Very interesting information about this film, Deadweight. If you can't make it to the great cheesehead state to see the film. Now, speaking of independent films, I figure what better way to celebrate independent films than reviewing one. In this case, we're looking at Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon. Yes, brought to us by writer, producer, director Scott Glosserman. And he brings us the story. It's kind of half mockumentary, half horror film. Okay, so the first, you know, half to a two-thirds of it is kind of mockumentary style, okay? You have a film crew out, and there's a reporter uh, played by Angela uh, Gothals, uh, uh, Gothalus, uh, Gothals, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I mispronounced the name, I do apologize, but Angela plays Taylor Gentry, who is a reporter who goes out and interviews Leslie Vernon. She got a tip, this guy wants to be the next slasher, okay? Because in the world of this film, you had Crystal Lake murders, you did have the events happen in Halloween, Mike Myers, and you also had the events from Elm Street, okay, happen in this world. So, slashers and serial killers are abound in this world of the film, okay? So they go ahead and see and interview Leslie Vernon, who's promising to be the next serial killer, and we get to see how he prepares for his first major legendary kills, okay? But what's great is we also learn uh, uh, different underlying uh, uh, themes that there's a whole community of serial killers, and it's funny, it's got really dark humor to it because it, it gives this slant like this is an occupation for them, a hobby for them. Uh, Scott Wilson, who plays Eugene, he plays an older serial killer. He brings his perspective of back in my day. And you've got, you know, uh, Nathan Bissell, who's playing uh, Leslie Vernon, does a beautiful job. I love his performance. He carries some of the scenes. He just really spot on. You really feel for Leslie Vernon. So by the time you get to the like the last third of the film where it's just true slasher horror film, you understand Leslie. And that's the way this film sets it up. You understand the killer in it. Uh, so, you know, when you see him in the real horror uh, movie setting, you're not quite as scared of him. And you have kind of an understanding of how he's going to do things. And really puts kind of a twist on the whole slasher genre. You also have Robert England in here, and you even got the it, Zelda Rubenstein. Actually, this was her last film she was in. You know, the Don't Go Into the Light, Marianne lady. There's a lot of horror films in that. This was one of her, this was her last film, and it was great to see her on the screen as well. Folks, no, this isn't phenomenal cinema, but this is a very good, refreshing take on the slasher film and mockumentary film all in one, okay? It reminded me a lot of Man Bites Dog. It was a friend film about a film crew doing a documentary on a serial killer there too. A lot of dark humor in that one. A little more uh, uh, s extreme violence in that one than there was in Leslie Vernon, okay? The French one, especially the uncut French one, which I saw many moons ago, but definitely Leslie Vernon's a uh, refreshing take on the horror genre in general, the mockumentary shaky cam style footage in general, and I suggest you see it if you haven't already. I gave it four stubs for myself. I really enjoyed it, watched it multiple times, and I just love the different angle they've taken on what has become a standard, uh, you know, kind of cookie cutter genre. They help bring a refreshing take on it. Also want to add, folks, that uh, you should go to Before the Mask. Look for Before the Mask. Help support the sequel. They want to shoot a sequel to this film. I'm looking very forward to seeing it if they can get it off the ground, but they need everybody's help. Again, look for Before the Mask. they got a Facebook page, a number of other pages out there trying to raise money to make a substantial and uh, equivalently good sequel, if not better than the original, okay? But they need everyone's help. So check them out. You know, help out. Five bucks there. Or go to India, go, go, and check Check out the other independent films that need your help getting off the ground because, folks, Schlollywood is failing us, so we have to look to the independent movie makers to bring us something fresh, exciting, and different to what has become a field of remakes 
and reboots. And that'll about do it for us here at Final Cut. Till next time, keep it. Thank you.